Hey everybody, so you might be wondering what is the difference between Bitcoin and Ethereum? Ethereum was in the news recently because Microsoft is now working with it. They're offering a blockchain as a service uh, offering for various businesses and financial institutions. And Microsoft's US financial services team is now working with the Ethereum blockchain to build stuff for various banks and financial institutions that want to get into the uh, blockchain world. And one of the first things they've put out is an actual a functioning uh, swap feature using the Ethereum blockchain. And when you think about all the financial, all the exotic financial products that banks use, uh, various swaps, various derivatives, options, contracts, these are all things that can be coded onto the Ethereum blockchain. And then when uh, a certain thing comes due, uh, it's actually executed. So the Ethereum blockchain allows for uh, actual programmable language to be part of the blockchain. And so just a couple of examples of how that can be used in the real world. You could start an Ethereum contract uh, one day that says uh, you want to give your kid a certain amount of allowance every week and that'll be enforced by computers all over the world. Your child will just receive money every week at a certain time from one of your accounts to your kid and you don't have to remember, they don't have to bug you. Uh, similar implementations could be done for paying rent or companies paying out royalties to all of their authors and musicians. The possibilities are almost limitless here. It also would allow for machines to transact with each other uh, to write code in the future and then uh, compete with each other, partner with each other. And uh, Ethereum is, when you look into it, it feels a lot like there's the, uh, there's the Ethereum dashboard there. That's the network status. I'll put a link to that in the description below. When you watch uh, both the network status, first of all, the network status, you notice that this is a very fast blockchain, 17 second block time. And uh, that's compared to a 10 minute block time for Bitcoin. And Bitcoin was launched in 2009, the world's first successful cryptocurrency. But uh, there are some things that Bitcoin cannot do, and that's because of the way it's designed. Uh, Bitcoin, as explained in the Ethereum white paper, which I'll link to in the description as well, uh, what Bitcoin is, is a state transition ledger. That's how they describe it. And uh, what that is doing is it's showing you transitions in state, in this case, the ownership of coins on the Bitcoin network. And so Bitcoin's ledger can show you, uh, David gave $2 of Bitcoin to Sally, and I can include a short note or a message in that transaction. I can say, hey, Sally, happy birthday. And hopefully I'm giving people more than $2 for their birthday. But <laughs> just as an example, uh, that's what Bitcoin allows you to do, and that's great. We have a real currency now that's not backed by any government, not manipulated by any old people at a central bank who are making decisions behind closed doors, who are unelected officials. That era of money is going to die out, and that's thanks to technologies like Bitcoin. So I do not want people to think that Bitcoin has been outdone or that it's no longer good. Ethereum is a fundamentally different technology and idea that also happens to use a blockchain. And as I just said, it happens to be a much faster blockchain and more sophisticated than Bitcoin's. What Ethereum's allows you to do is not just show that you've sent a certain amount of value, a certain amount of ether to another person. It allows you to include code in the, uh, the, the transaction you broadcast. And that code is replicated by all the Ethereum nodes that are mining all over the world, uh, similar to Bitcoin except this is live code. So it actually allows you to do so much. There are a lot of use cases here like prediction markets and gambling, peer-to-peer -peer crowdfunding. You can set up a contract uh, that allows you to receive contributions from people and you will only receive those contributions if a certain amount is, if a certain amount is uh, raised by a certain time. Essentially, this is an infallible uh, Kickstarter killer if you were to create this contract for it. It's also a little humbling when you really read into Ethereum and start to dive into some of the technical documentation, if that's your thing, that the only thing standing between making a, a working replica of Bitcoin on the Ethereum blockchain is a few lines of code. 
Uh, you can create your own currencies. You can create a currency that functions mathematically just as Bitcoin does on the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, it's a little scary when you think about how powerful this platform might become one day because uh, what it is, you know, some of the Ethereum developers refer to it as the EVM, the Ethereum Virtual Machine. Virtual machines have not existed before. This is essentially a censorship resistant, decentralized, uh, distributed all over the world cloud software service that monetizes itself by having its own currency, Ether. And to run transactions on this network, one of the ways they prevent the code from being really, they prevent uh, people from writing and publishing wasteful code or malicious code that goes on forever and has infinite loops, the reason why they're able to address that is because of this Ether currency aspect. You have to burn Ether as you would fuel uh, to actually have computation done on the network. And so this is incredible because uh, as some Ethereum supporters like to remind the public, this uh, does for any kind of programmable product, software, apps, anything like that, what Bitcoin did for money and currency. So this is a different idea. This is not trying to usurp Bitcoin's role as digital currency. This is actually decentralizing how apps can be broadcast and run, decentralizing how you can publish and run simple kinds of financial software. And it's gonna be, it's gonna be crazy when banks start to use this platform to run their own contracts. And then down the road when various exchange services start to play with Ethereum. Uh, as I said to somebody on Twitter who asked me about this, I don't think Microsoft is in the blockchain business for charity. I think they see probably a lot of money in this eventually, and in the near term, they just want to be a one-stop shop for the banks and financial institutions that are starting to get very interested in blockchain technology. But Bitcoin's blockchain, it just can't do all this stuff because that's not the way it was built. And I don't mean to disparage it. There have definitely been uh, some uh, you know, improvements and enhancements over the years, like multi-signature addresses and stuff like that. But Ethereum is coming at it from a totally different uh, frame of mind. And this feels very much like a currency and a decentralized network that belongs in the modern age. It doesn't feel like uh, some rudimentary experiment. It feels like the platform for something that could be really important to society down the road in ways that we can't even predict yet. Uh, it's also humbling to think that not only can you replicate Bitcoin or any altcoin on Ethereum's network with just a few lines of code, you can actually replicate the US dollar. You can create a uh, kind of proprietary system that allows you to mimic dollar transfers. And if you're a bank or a financial institution with the licenses to do so, and they have the ability to do this, you can use the blockchain as a way of transferring dollars around the world or any other currency and do it much more efficient than uh, if you were to do it through your own traditional channels. I think in a lot of ways, Ethereum is what people thought Ripple was going to be. This is the one that is highly disruptive, could be highly appealing to financial institutions. But, you know, the code that runs on Ethereum, you can make it to be as compliant or non-compliant as you want. So this is an international network, and the value, the use cases, might just start to really build in the future. This could be uh, truly the first revolutionary product to uh, come from the blockchain since currency since Bitcoin, because that was clearly a success in terms of how much the value has gone up from nothing to $5.6 billion. That's pretty good. But Ethereum could be something even bigger, because uh, if you want to run an app, if you want to run any kind of software in the future, and you don't want it to be knocked out by hackers or by maybe a malicious government or a government or a political organization trying to censor you, maybe a competitor trying to take you out, a denial of service attack, Ethereum might be a really cost-effective and smart way to run your app so that it can't be taken down. So hopefully this explains things a little bit. I didn't even go into how to store Ethereum. Uh, there's a web wallet or two. I'll link in the description below to an article about that. But I can't vouch for any of the web wallets. I can't vouch for anything. Uh, this is still highly experimental, but it is interesting to keep an eye on. Thanks for watching.